but this is fantastic posture. And one thing I want to draw attention to is the distance between, you know, he's got his testicles on show. That's a very big sign of dominant body language. The distance between his knees here and the distance between his feet there, that's fantastic. But the other thing I want to draw your attention to is the way that his hands and arms are resting on the armrest. He's making use of as much space as possible. <laughs> Hello guys and welcome back to another body language analysis video. In this video we're going to be looking at Bjorn Ironside. The Ragnar video managed to get 100,000 views in a week which is blowing my mind guys. Thank you so much. So we're going to do Bjorn Ironside. I think he might be slightly more dominant than Ragnar. I'm not even I'm not sure just from this clip that I've seen which I've only been through once. But let's play this clip guys and let's see what we can find, okay? I wonder if you even know, brother, why you have been brought here. Yes. Louder. I can. Just look at that posture, guys. That is fantastic. He's slightly leaning to the right, which shows how, well, to the left, which shows how relaxed he is. But just look at that posture. Every single limb is taking up as much space as possible here. This could be, to be honest, slightly more out here, but I think the way that he's leaning is forcing this leg to be slightly inwards. But just look at that posture. Look at the, the width and the amount of space that he's taken up, and it's a very large chair. Now, when you're sitting on a seat that doesn't have a long back like this, sometimes it's harder to stretch your legs out, so you might have to adjust. But this is fantastic posture. And one thing I want to draw attention to is the distance between, you know, he's got his testicles on show. That's a very big sign of dominant body language. The distance between his knees here and the distance between his feet there, that's fantastic. But the other thing I want to draw your attention to is the way that his hands and arms are resting on the armrest. He's making use of as much space as possible. And this isn't clenched. This isn't clenched. What a lot of people do, yeah, it's a fist, but it's not grabbing the arm of the chair. So a lot of people do this. A lot of people will grab the arm of the chair. They'll hold it tightly. And something that usually looks quite dominant gets made very submissive very quickly because it's almost nervousness. You know, you're clinging on for dear life. You're panicking. That's what it shows. When you're, when you're doing this type of posture, guys, okay, your arms should be rested on here and your hands should just be loose like this. This is a perfect example, like this one over here, okay? If you can imitate this, you'll get a great effect. I tell you. And I know he's chained up and obviously he is nervous. Like he's chained up here, so it's hard to have good body language. But just by comparison, if you would, let's just say, I, I know it's not accurate because he is chained up. But if you just wanted to see the polar opposite, you know, it would be arms tucked in. It would be hands clasped together and feet together in a very submissive style and somewhat looking down and looking sheepish, okay? So that would be the contrast. I know why. I killed Agatha. The fact that he was looking down there as well, that's a very submissive move. What? And another thing we can draw the attention to here is usually leaning forward is, is, is more submissive because it shows that you're in tr you're the other person's got your attention. You know, you have to lean in to speak to them because they're the one that you want to give your attention to, okay? But even when he does this, look, even has that leg out wide, this leg out wide. This, this is fantastic. The distance between these two feet is fantastic. This is how, this is a great example of, I think, how every guy should sit. And when women say manspreading, I'm getting a guy on soon, hopefully. If not, I'll just do the video myself. But he is a neurospinal surgeon, I believe. And he talks about how the bones in the, in the male hips are designed differently. So manspreading is actually far more comfortable and natural for us. So when women say manspreading, don't listen. Don't listen. Sit like this as often as possible. Okay, the other thing I want to draw your attention to 
is the Conor McGregor effect. Conor McGregor does this all the time. He sits with his... For example, his elbows on his kind of thigh or knee here, but Conor McGregor usually sits with his hands rested on his thighs or his knees, and it creates a larger shape, okay? So you end up taking up more space, and it makes you look very, very dominant. I killed your mother, Bjorn. <sighs> so here he's actually getting up a bit too quick, but based on the scene, let me play it on because it's a bit blurry, isn't it? So he gets up a bit too quick, but based on the scene, I'll give it a pass because that's the nature of the scene. He's aggressive. He's anxious. Okay, so I'll give it a pass. Otherwise, it wouldn't be congruent. You know, it, it, you'd sacrifice, you'd sacrifice the kind of brilliance of the script, if you would, for body language, which isn't a good thing to do. But the one thing that he did do here is you can see that his hands are on his thighs. When you get up in this manner, with your hands on your thighs, see if I can get the exact scene. This is going to be tough, okay? Somewhat there, okay? Well, you can see when you get up like that, you know, even if you don't do it aggressively, even if you do it slowly, when men get up like this, look at the figure that it casts. And I noticed as well, the more I was in the gym, the bigger I got, the more naturally I stood up in this manner where I just kind of, because I think my body just got heavier, so it was easier just to assist myself with my hands on my knees, and it kind of gives the impression that you are just a big lump of a man, I would assume. Do you see that there, guys? The way, as he gets up, look, his eyes are locked on this guy. Watch the entire time. the entire time, even as he walks. And again, touching of the face, like I told you guys before, the ultimate invasion of pri privacy. And he comes in close. Now, I, I wanna teach you guys quickly about personal space, okay? This, obviously you can't really do this in real life. You can't just go up and grab somebody by the face. Occasionally, it might call for that occasion. Some people are dicks. But when it comes to personal space, we're most comfortable with closeness when people are to the side of us. You think about fans in a stadium, okay? They'll be shoulder to shoulder and nobody has any problem with it. The second most comfortable space is front on because obviously you can see the person. You can see what's going on. It makes us feel more comfortable. But obviously, naturally, as we can all assume, if somebody's right up in your face, it doesn't make you feel completely at ease, does it? But the least comfortable scenario for personal space is when somebody's behind you. If you just think if you were walking home from somewhere, okay, and it was dark, you could even be a big guy. But if somebody's within even 10 meters of you, you know, most people are apprehensive about what's going to happen, what's going on. Now, if you were a mere couple of centimeters behind somebody, then, you know, it either means one or two things. It's very threatening behavior um, or maybe it's sexual behavior. But that's why people are uncomfortable with somebody being that close to them from behind unless they really trust them. But to the side, personal space is pretty good. Um, but front on, you know, it, it does give a kind of face off image. OK, so it's, it's almost like a like fighters squaring off before before the bell goes. Why? I thought she was Ivory. I thought that she... I thought that Ivory was coming to kill me. I don't care what you thought! Be Just as a side note, guys, how much does he sound like Ragnar? Being drunk is no excuse for anything! The way he's doing the same kind of expressional tones, the way he's stepping around, that's... Like I showed you in the Ragnar video, the way he's stepping left to right, he's taking up more space, he's moving around. There's two different forms, okay? You can sometimes stand your ground, hold body, hold eye contact, and assert dominance in that manner. But other times, when it calls for an aggressive scenario like this, you can walk around, you can take up more space. Either one will work, but it just depends on the scenario. I, I believe personally that standing your ground and looking a woman in the eye is the best scenario, but when it comes to men, sometimes this strutting around works best. You murdered my brother! We can see there the slapping of the chest. It's very ape-like behavior. Silverback, in fact. You murdered the most famous shield maiden in the world! You! You sad! There, we see the exact same thing that Ragnar does. Ready? 
You sit there. The way that he angled his body back, his arms are wide, ready to sit you there. Sit there. Ragnar does the exact same thing. It's almost it's almost like a carefree, open wide body language thing where he leans back. It's it's just so open. That's what it is. You know, shoulders are back and open, arms are back and open. I'd imagine that his legs have gone wider when he does that and the penis is on show. It's just the ultimate show of just manhood. Sad, pathetic, rattled, little There, he's doing the same thing again with the arms going wide, expressive gestures. Oh man! You are not fit to kiss her feet! And you aren't fit to be called a son of Ragnar. I... <clears throat> Do you know what, guys? Even when you've stood there, I, I don't know if I've caught the right scene here. Let's have a look. <clears throat> I did miss it. Apologies. Let me go back. And you aren't fit to be called a son of Ragnar. I... I know he's just stepped to the left slightly there, but you can see that his uh, feet position and even when he's just stood naturally are quite wide apart. That's the one thing I wanted to bring your attention to there. I, I think if we can go back very, very slightly here. I... Okay, so his foot just before I played this, that one hasn't moved. His first one was around about there. And if we draw our lines up, I don't know if I can do this very straight, but it's in line with the shoulder. And this one was about here. It's pretty much in line with the shoulder. And that's how you should stand. You should always stand with your feet shoulder width apart. <laughs> And there's that personal touch leading in with the whisper. We, nearly every scene that I've ever shown you guys, they will do this in films. I, I don't know whether they train this to actors at acting schools and just say like how much it works or how much the audience responds to a whisper, but it works so, so well and they all do it. And in real life, if you ever want to get a point across, sometimes that whisper can really, really work. I don't know whether he's injured, okay, because I haven't got context of the film, but the way that he struts away here, like he is, he's actually deliberately, we can see here, look at this movement of the leg. He's deliberately driving this toe that way and this knee out that way. Like he's deliberately doing the Conor McGregor, Ragnar type walk that I displayed to you guys in the first one. Watch this, with his arms wide too, so we can see that. So these arms are coming really wide. This one's going to go out wide after, after this too. And we can see the same thing happening with the legs. Watch this. I know that. I actually think he messed up the left foot. That's why I thought he was injured. But you can, we can see that he was trying to do that exact walk, okay? It, he's basically, I, I'm not saying you have to walk like this in real life. I'm just saying when you walk in a confident, slow manner, you, it doesn't hurt to make yourself a little bit wider than normal. You don't want to walk within yourself, you know? There's a, there's a reason women put heels on and put one toe in front of the other, one foot in front of the other, sorry, with their toes pointing forward, because it's a very feminine behavior. It sways the hips left to right, makes them look sexy. As a man, it's the opposite. Our, like I said earlier, our, our pelvis bone, hip bones, they're designed in a different manner. They're designed for us to walk with our legs out wide. We've got testicles in between our legs as a penis. The wider you walk with, with re being reasonable, you know, don't be an idiot. It's not like you're doing a, uh, a sumo squat or something. But if you walk with your legs slightly wider as uh, Bjorn did there, it can make a big difference to how you're perceived. You're right, Gary. I am a sad wreck of a man. I've made a bad job of my life. And whatever you want to do with it. Did you see that, guys? That was fantastic, actually. I didn't see that the first time I watched this. Watch this here. From this point onwards, okay? We never get sideways angles on these shots, okay? Usually it's front on, but I can finally show you guys what I mean about the shoulder roll. So his left shoulder is currently pointing forward. Okay, as we play it on. Whatever. 
Do you see how exaggerated that is, guys? Look, it's almost like he's walking side to side, the way he's patrolling forward. Conor McGregor does the same thing. Now, I'm not saying again that you should do it exactly like this in real life, but there's a reason that a lot of these superstars, as you would, use it for emphasis and dramatic effect because of the kind of amplified body language, the hyperbole body, body language, if you would, that it displays. And... If you can have a small form of this, it will have great results in your own life. Whatever you want to do with me, even if you want to burn me alive, I'll accept it. I've deserved it. Unlike you and Uba, I've never done anything to make our father proud of me. Chuck is guilty. You all heard him confess. <sighs> we have some more shoulder roll in there as he walks away. The way he sat down, okay? So he does the exact same manner as how he got up. Watch this. There. Again, I, I just think this is a fantastic way to sit down. I think putting your hands on your knees like this. Look at the shape that it casts. It goes across the back too because his head's down, but I don't necessarily think you have to do that to that extent. But the hands being on there, just the sheer side, and the legs being planted solid there, full width apart. I know the yellow makes it look a lot bigger than what it is, but you can't deny that that's not a giant shape that he's cast in there. And the way that he's actually sat down slowly this time makes a big difference. And look at that. The way he transitioned perfectly. Now this is a fantastic shape. Again, the hands just limp over the sides. Uh, you know, limp doesn't usually sound good when it comes to body language or anything, to be honest. But the way it's just limp over that armrest makes it very relaxed. And that's what you want. You don't want to be gripping this part of the armrest tightly and looking submissive or nervous. So here again, look at this. goes right over the side. So it's even bigger than the chair. And then we've got the knees planted, the feet planted here. That's a fantastic posture, okay, guys? Just, uh, just in case I never get a scene that's like this, I just want to teach you guys something else. This is called a power pose, okay? There's one in a Harvey Specter video that I'm doing soon that I'll show you guys too. But imagine that his arms are, imagine this seat is lower. Imagine this seat ends around about here, okay? Let's say his arms are on top of the seat and they wrap around like that. We've all seen somebody do the cinema move, you know, when we were young in films. Well, if you put your arms on the top of the seat and wrap them around, maybe you're sat on a sofa or something. If you wrap them around here, this can make you look enormous. And it's called a power move. It's another one. It will actually increase your testosterone, as will this. The sitting like this will increase testosterone naturally because your brain tricks your body chemistry into producing more testosterone just based on the po posture that you're taking up. I will decide tomorrow what punishment he must face. Take him away. Okay, guys, I think that's pretty much it for this scene. As we can see, we've only got a couple of seconds left, and I, ca I cannot imagine that Bjorn's going to be in this now. I think they're just going to drag him away and end the scene. So I hope that was something different. I'm so glad he did that seated posture. I think that alone, I think definitely the shoulder roll as he walked, the over oh, it was definitely over-exaggerated, as was his uh, Conor McGregor walk. But... These are definitely things that you can slightly apply to your own life. You know, if you did walk down the street like that, you're probably going to get some attention. You're probably going to get in a fight of some sort. or Somebody's going to question who you are, unless you are as big as Bjorn. But if you can add these things slightly to your own life so you're not walking in a submissive manner, okay? Like I said, women walk in one foot in front of the other. It's not what men do. Men is one foot out wide, the other foot out wide. It's very different. But the way that he was seated, that seated posture is some of the best I think I've ever seen in body language history. If there is even records out there of body language history, let's just say first man body language history. But that's the best seated posture I think I've ever seen. That's fantastic. And that you can do in real life. Okay, that one you can do in real life because it's very relaxed. And 
if you're going to take anything away from that video, make sure it's that. So next time you're getting up, sitting down, next time you are seated and you want to sprawl your body out and make yourself look bigger, remember this video with Bjorn and try and copy it the best you can. But thank you as always, guys. Really appreciate it. If we manage to hit 100,000 views in a week on this one again, it's going to be unbelievable. I mean, the channel is growing at such a rate at the moment. Two, two million minutes per month. 4,000 subscribers per month, that's going to be up. I mean, the month isn't even complete in that sense yet with the data based on what it does. You know, it only took off about halfway through the month. So I think that's going to double by the end. And the views are up to like nearly half a million per month now. So thank you so much. Really appreciate it. I'm looking to do a sequence of body language videos today and tomorrow so hopefully i can get like about 10 of them out i was looking to do a body language kind of relay and just fire these videos out and see how they do so look out for those guys and thank you as always